it was a hard event. It was a uh, uh, very well thought out event that we put together um, between Greg and I, and uh, it was intended to be an event that was going to be very difficult to finish. Uh, at no point in time did we ever want a black class. Um, that was never a goal. We never talked about having a black class. We actually talked about hoping we wouldn't have a black class. Um, so, you know, that was not the uh, intentions for that. And I can promise you there wasn't a person in this world outside of Greg and I, maybe Liz, that uh, wanted her to get to the top of that rope uh, more than anything. So um, I think you guys all saw that, you know, when we do our events, we're, you know, um, invested in our, our participants, our athletes. Um, you know, we, we, we want everybody to succeed, but at the same time, we always have a standard and that's what that is. That's the standard. It's not changing. We won't change it during an event. Um, and that's just how it goes. So, you know, again, we, we wanted her to get to the top of that rope more than anything. Um, but we couldn't change the standard of what it was. And, you know, that's the way, I guess you could say the cookie crumbles as it is. So, um, all in all though, it was an awesome event. Uh, you know, we had, uh, nine people show up, 17 people signed up originally. Um, of those nine, you know, Liz was the only one to get to hour 40. Um, we lost a person in the first hour and a half. We lost people at hour six, eight, we lost two more at eight. I think it was, um, we lost somebody, I think, around 10 hours in. Uh, 23 hours, we had med drops start happening. So um, you guys probably all know Kyle Crutcher in our community. He's, you know, a very um, strong individual. He is uh, a very determined individual. He probably was one of the people that most people thought would probably be at the end of this event. Um, it just wasn't his day. So around... Uh, Jeez, it was probably hour 19 or 20. Uh, he started to uh, puke and uh, he was keeping some stuff down, but it was becoming too consistent. Uh, anytime he exerted it himself, he started to puke. So um, we gave him every chance we could and uh, he definitely did not want to go out that way. Um, in the end, you know, it just wasn't worth the risk because he wasn't able to you know, keep his fluids down. Uh, on top of that, we were in a position where we we're about to go into night navigation, um, you know, with Greg taking them into the, uh, the mountains and, you know, it's too big of a risk to put him in the middle of a situation where it's pitch black out on a trail in the mountains. And if he gets sick to a point where, you know, it's an, an actual medical emergency, um, you know, we'd have to send a search party essentially, hopefully he's on the trail and we can find him. Um, but, you know, ultimately we decided that that was not worth the risk. So uh, we decided to med drop him. Um, you know, it was, it was a tough decision knowing how determined he was to uh, get to that point. And, you know, even he will say he felt good enough to keep going um, outside of the fact that he was puking every so often. Um, but again, we, we have to take his health and, uh, you know, make that decision for him possibly just because, you know, he's a very determined individual. Uh, around hour 24, uh, we lost uh, Curtis. And uh, you guys probably, if you watched and followed the videos, uh, we dubbed him Crampy Curtis, or at least I did. Um, every video from about eight, nine hours in, he had some form of a cramp. Uh, anything from forearm muscles cramping, where his fingers were stuck in, you know, positions like this to biceps cramping where he's pushing his arm down to try to, you know, extend it out. Um, I think the last and final cramp he ended up having was a glute cramp, which was a new one. So, you know, he, he basically had his whole entire body uh, cramping. And we, uh, we gave him anything and every possible remedy we could. Um, you know, he, uh, he had five bananas, I think, within a couple hours. Um, we gave him salt tabs. We got pickle juice for everybody. Um, you know, we gave him Gatorades. We gave him uh, electrolytes, um, mustard. Uh, we put him in a cold pool of water, hopefully to like at least you know shock the system a little bit. 
Um, and absolutely nothing worked. Uh, so he, he is dubbed Crampy Curtis for life now. Um, any event I have him anymore, it's, that's going to be his nickname, and I'm just going to roll with it because he's probably going to cramp even if it's, you know, a knockout event where it's only six hours or something. Uh, but anyways, he was solid. He was, he was, he was uh, you know, he was legit staying in the event even though he was cramping up. Um, he was in third place more or less the majority of the event. Uh, Kyle was in first place for a little bit, and then Liz just dominated um, and took first place and ran with it. Um, you know, so she, uh, she really took over when we got to the second set of workouts. Um, once we got into the Island workouts, uh, you know, she had some finishes and she was the only one that finished. So she was the only one that gained points. Other people got DNFs, so they get, did not finish. So there was no points to be given. Um, you know, all the workouts are capped in an hour. If they didn't finish in an hour. They didn't get any points. Um, so, you know, she separated herself on those workouts, uh, when we got to that point. So, um, you know, the, those, those three were solid, the whole event, uh, Mike, Mike was, Mike was like silent, but deadly in the background. Like he's just grinding everything out. Um, he's very quiet. So he's just methodical with his stuff. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, Liz and Mike and Mike pushed all the way to hour 38. Um, you know, it was a, uh tough pill to swallow when he wanted to drop, but I, I understood the situation he saw at hand. Um, you know, we just got done doing the Cerberus AMRAP. So some of you have done it in prior Cerberus events, um, or if you've done any of the August uh, HDT coalition workouts, uh, we always throw the Cerberus AMRAP in there or the February one uh, this last year. Um, and it, it ends with each round a 60 second overhead hold with a sandbag. And, you know, his shoulders were smoked and he was trying to do that overhead hold and he, he was getting maybe 20 to 30 seconds um, on average. And then, you know, it started to drop as that continued on. And, uh, you know, the second movement we had was on the Q mod six. The second movement we had was uh, a ruck overhead for a quarter mile. So you can't proceed forward without having your ruck overhead for the quarter, for the quarter mile. Um, that took him and I actually have the numbers here. So that took him, you know, a good chunk of time, uh, about 12 minutes. And, uh, you know, he, he was hurting at that point. So, um, in the end, you know, he got to the, to the last one, he had about 57 minutes left, I think, to, uh, complete the fifth Q mod, which was a, uh, inchworm. So inchworm with ruck on, uh, it took Liz about almost an hour. So about 50, 57, 56 minutes, 57 minutes. So about 57 minutes to do that Q mod, um, which was the pass fail. So, um, you know, at that point he was spent, uh, you know, it, it, it probably wouldn't have been um, easy for him to actually finish out that event. He actually uh, did the Pittsburgh Q mod six, which had uh, that same movement in it. And he knew in his mind, he already said, you know, it took me an hour and 20 minutes to just do that, that Q mod. So, um, you know, he, he, he put it all out there though. He got further than he expected, he said. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, it was, it was awesome to see him go as far as he did. Um, sucked that it had to, you know, end with two hours remaining, but, uh, you know, that's how the event is. We, we, we give you that 24 hour buffer and you can, you know, as long as you're putting in the work, uh, and you're not slowing stuff down, <laughs> and you're sort of sticking to the uh, basic standard of, you know, being able to do the work, um, you know, you stick around for that first 24 hours. And then after that, that's where, you know, we get into the pass fail aspects. Um, so, you know, that's, that's how our events run for Cerberus. Um, you know, the mindset being that, you know, you'll get your money's worth for that first 24 hours. And then sort of everything after that's just icing on the cake as far as you can get in. Um, so all in all, um, I think Greg and I both agreed that the event went perfect uh, in the sense of everything going smoothly. Um, again, the only other change we could possibly have had, and I'm sure that you guys would all agree, is seeing Liz get to the top. Um, you know, other than that, though, I think the event was, was great. Um, you know, we didn't have any uh, big concerns. Um, you know, most of the people that didn't make it to the uh, last 23, 24 hours, 
they they knew they bit off more they <laughs> more than they could chew, um, and they they pulled themselves. So we didn't even really have to uh, <laughs> worry about um, you know being the people that actually start pulling people out. Um, and <clears throat> you know they're, they're they're determined to come back. I think uh, majority of who we had the nine that came, I wouldn't be surprised if you know <laughs> most <clears throat> if not all. <laughs> would uh, end up coming back, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, back for Charleston. So hopefully you guys can see actually, there is a, uh, we're gonna run a 25% off discount. It should be in the comments down there, uh, pinned to the top of this. Um, so 25% off on Charleston uh, Cerberus for the next seven days. Um, so if you wanna get in on that, you can save some cash on top of that. Both Greg and I are going to give you guys 25% off one of our my throwdowns or uh, uh, one of the uh, Green Beret Fitness <laughs> events if you use that code as well. Um, so it should be right there. Hopefully you guys see it. It's there. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, so again, you know, the event went off perfect. Uh, and uh, I think the majority of the participants or all the participants uh, based on the post interviews and the uh, interviews during um, all thought it was, you know, a, a very well put together event. Um, I didn't hear anything negative. Then again, they may not have wanted to say negative stuff. I, I always tell people, be honest with me. I don't care if it's, you know, bad stuff, but um, sometimes people just don't feel like uh, telling you the truth on some aspects. But um, at this point, you know, I'd like to uh, invite Liz to come on in. So she should be able to enter in here and we should see a little dual screen action going. And, uh, you know, again, if you guys have questions, Crystal will read them off to me uh, because I don't think I can see any comments for this. Yeah. There's a button that meant long. Oh, there's Liz. Liz is in. All right, let's see. Let me get my volume up. All right, can you see me? Um, we can hear you. Okay, you can you can hear me? Oh, here yep. we go. There, there we, we go. go. All right. How you feeling? Ooh, a little sore and uh a little tired. I ended up only getting like five hours of sleep before getting to the airport at three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were right by, we were right after you. We ended up, uh, we had seven thirty flights. So we were there like five, five thirty or something. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very so cool. no, uh, no issues or anything like that. Just basic soreness. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, um, yeah, just like muscle soreness, um, a little tired. Um, sometimes it no, takes me. you're tired. Oh, I'm a little Can't tired. Why. Can't imagine why. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, it, it's been taking me maybe a, a second longer to come up with the thought. But um, yeah, I mean, as far as like things to expect after doing forty hours of hard work like that, like I'm doing pretty good. So awesome. hopefully so we'll hydrated. head back. Yeah, yeah, I've got my water right here. Awesome. And yeah, just moving around the house and stuff like that. Awesome. What time did you get in? Uh, I finally landed in Vegas around like 8 o'clock, 7.30, something like that. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And then cool. called in sick to work, except for... <laughs> I, Hopefully I they're not watching. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, I don't think they want me there right now. Um, I did, I did, so for everyone who doesn't know, um, I work at a lab and we do wastewater and uh, uh, we do COVID and infectious disease surveillance through wastewater analysis. Interesting. So I went and uh, did my collection today, went to two manholes and popped them open and had my bottle of uh, uh, deposits from people <laughs> and brought it back to the lab. <laughs> So that was the only work I did. <laughs> All right. Fair. So um, tell us, you know, what you think about how the event went. Um, I mean, we, we, I think everybody, anybody who's watching this saw at least the end um, that 
the video's got a couple hundred something, maybe even a thousand at this point watches on it. So uh, if they're, if they saw that, I'm sure they're watching right now. Uh, but, you know, overall, you know, the progress throughout the whole event, how'd you feel? Um, the workouts, the movements, things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this was a hard event. Um, I came in not expe expecting just how hard it was going to be. I knew it was going to be difficult. I mean, 40 hours of anything is going to be hard, but I mean, like that was not the kind of level that I was expecting. And so, um, I felt good throughout it. Um, especially just kind of like sticking with, um, uh, kind of like a rhythm that would work like with the workouts yep. uh, just trying to maintain myself and be consistent not trying to like uh blow up too fast and then really drop towards the end um I know for me um making sure that I had enough salts and electrolytes um consistently was important and so um any chance that I could get I was like grabbing a, a goo or like salt tabs stuff like that when you had um, access to food and stuff well the the electrolytes we were allowed at but yeah the oh, and, i thought he took everything from you guys all right well that's good we, yeah um and so but yeah i mean like whenever we had a chance to eat it was just like yeah we just we just burned a bunch of calories we need to make that up like this is a long game like eat as much as we can even though like everyone's digestive systems were just like having it with us <laughs> yeah kyle's gi track i don't know what was going on with it but that was some funky stuff going on with kyle so yeah um, yeah i i mean yeah we'll just leave it at that that was some funky stuff so yeah um just real quick i want to make a real quick uh point so one of the th she mentioned the electrolytes and stuff so one thing i think uh talking to curtis he actually doubled his water intake to hydrate on the day before the event um, and then we think actually that's possibly he flushed out all his electrolytes essentially because it was just water. Um, oh, so I, I think most likely that's probably why he cramped up so much. Um, and, uh, you know, we never really got to play. We were playing catch up the whole way through and we just never got to a point where we got past that. So if yeah. you do an event, you know, hydration's good, but you have to make sure you're still getting those electrolytes and salts and stuff because you will flush your system out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just a real quick point for everybody there. So, yeah, no, uh, sure. yeah so, you know, the food, obviously, uh, we took your guys' food at the beginning, uh, yep. more of a mental aspect. Um, but, you know, more or less, you guys actually got to eat a decent amount. It wasn't a, um, you know, originally we said 24-hour mark, you'll get your food back. Uh, I'm pretty sure we, you know, passed out food a handful of times, but you didn't know when that was coming. Um, and obviously, with the way the uh, the weather was and the heat and everything, uh, we wanted to keep at least something in your stomachs and stuff like that. So, um, was there ever a moment where you felt like, man, I could really use some food right now, and it magically just happened to be that moment? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whenever it came, I was like, oh man, thank you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, like it was cool how like when we came in, we had we had our food. Like, yeah. this was my food. This is my strategy. And then right from the get-go, all the food was taken. And then when we were given food, it was it was our food. Like, you got what you got. Yeah. And um, you're either going to be happy with that or you're not. So um, that was yeah, a cool I think, uh, the, the first set of workouts, um, people were hurting already. So I just reached in and started tossing people something out of the bag. We did check to make sure everybody that there was no food allergies by the way, just so everyone knows, made sure there's no food allergies before we started just handing stuff out. But um, yeah, I think somebody got like a, a crustables and then like somebody else got like a little pack of peanut butter. And it was like, you know, some people got good stuff. Some people got not as, you know, filling stuff, but um, we still had a ton of food at the end of that event, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I walked away with like five packets of tuna or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which you deserved. You deserved them. So. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what? What did you think? As far as uh, you know, and I'm I'm gonna guess. I'm probably gonna be able to pick this from you, but um, 
as far as the HDT workouts go, you know, you guys had the first three went lower, upper body, and then core. Um, you know, what was the worst workout you thought was there? And I'm, I'm going to just take a guess. You tell me if I'm right or wrong, but the core workout, the soul crusher core workout was the worst mm -hmm. one. Yeah, that was the worst one. <laughs> Why? Why was that the worst one? Because uh, it's a soul crusher. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you guys had an upper body soul crusher later. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, with the core, it was just there was so many get-ups. And no. so... Who would do such what? a thing? I know, right? So for anyone who's not familiar with what the sandbag get-up is, is you take the sandbag, you put it on your shoulder... You get to a laying down position, and then you have to get yourself back up with the sandbag on your shoulder. And so, um, man, I'm trying to remember the specifics. I know there was like, well, here uh, I have it. I have it in front of me. Perfect. Uh, so we started out with sandbag rotations. Uh, so mm -hmm. those were the four count exercise. Then we had uh, there was a hundred of those. We had sandbag get ups with fifty. That was twenty five on each side. So I was nice with that. That was a nice move on my part. Just yeah. saying. Um, you had the Billy Blanks for 30. And everybody's favorite. Right? Oh, yeah. Curtis Owen, you want to fill that one in? <laughs> was it? Oh, man. Carl Fredrickson's. There we go. Yeah, it was yeah. Carl Fredrickson's. And that was 50, but oh. that was 50 total. Yeah. Which is basically 100 get ups in a sense. But Carl Fredrickson's yeah. style get ups. And then you had 100 yeah. sandbag sit ups to finish that one off. Mm hmm. Yeah, the yeah the hundred sandbags. You know, it was just like try to get through them as fast as you can. It was like, yeah, I was I was trying to like get twenty of those done um, before I like took a small break. Was, yeah, like, and then not only that, Kyle messed up on his reps, and ended up having to try to go back and then try to play catch up the whole way through that one too. And I saw you yeah. side eyeing him the whole entire event. The so I mean, in that event, you had your eye, this eye was just sticking out to the left, and Kyle was always there. I could see you following those reps every single time, and then you'd knock out a few extra ones on the next set. And all of a sudden, you look over, oh, he just started those. Okay, I got to catch up. I got to get to those. And then all of a sudden, you were doing those. And then all of a sudden, he's taking a drink of water, and I see you start moving faster. And I was like, man, she is watching him hard. <laughs> I mean, yeah. When I saw that you was coming in, when Kyle was coming in, I was just like, man, he's gonna be my my biggest competition right there. Like I, I, I see think most people movie. thought that too. I yeah, I mean, like, his heavy drop training numbers are just like remarkable. And I mean, so yeah, I saw that. And I was just like, got to, yeah, got to, got to, you had a rubber necker thing going on the whole entire time that way. <laughs> and then you had Curtis right across from you, so it was easy to watch Curtis because it just looked like you were just staring, sort of. Yeah, a right. Um, Ian was in front of you most of the time, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I saw you side eyeing and rubbernecking a little bit on those, uh, just to see where he was at every time. So, I mean, yeah. you know, to give you guys an idea, I think I just looked at it. So Kyle actually still coming out of, uh, 23 hours still had more points than anybody else other than Liz. So he still had, I think it was 82 points. You had a total, by the way, you didn't, we didn't even talk about it because, it was at that point, there was such a gap. It didn't make much of a difference, but um, you had a total of like 164 points. So oh, nice. over, the, over the course of the 40 hours. So, um, which is, you know, like I said, the next closest was Kyle who went out after 23 hours and he had like 82. So um, how, how the uh, elevation feel? Oh, it you're, didn't you're, not, I mean, you're in Las, you're in Las Vegas. So you're not really up in, the sky really i mean you're yeah it's it's not too much elevation here so that was something that um i did consider when signing up um how is the al uh, altitude gonna influence my performance and so one good test that i got to do was a uh, green beret fitness's uh, operation high roller so that mm -hmm. was here in las vegas uh uh ruck up mount charleston um where we got above ten thousand feet of elevation um and so during that event i mean it's all cardio you're going up the mountain yeah. and um most of those was, events are cardio yeah right and so um there wasn't a point during that event um where i felt too concerned about the altitude i think at one point i got a small headache but overall yeah. 
it was like good to go. And so um, while I was still considering that I'll be at this altitude for a lot longer, and so we may see those effects later on, um, there are things that we could do now to try to prevent uh, or reduce uh, the effects of altitude. So just drinking a bunch of water, mm -hmm. um, being well fed. Uh, I packed away, I meant to pack away a couple of chocolate bars um, in the event that I were to get altitude sickness, but I ended up accidentally leaving them in my suitcase. So um, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but overall, yeah, I felt perfectly fine with the altitude. It didn't seem to cause an issue at all. Yeah, I don't, I would say, you know, more or less, I don't think the altitude played as much of a role in any of the event. Um, maybe a little bit in some aspects, maybe there's a little more fatigue, but I don't mm -hmm. think it made the event uh, unattainable by any means. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I don't want to, I, I obviously can't say for anybody who was doing the event, but I wouldn't say that that would probably be the ultimate reason to not continue would be because of the altitude. I don't think that was a big enough issue that it would drive someone to make that decision of like, okay, I'm super spent and, you know, I can't do this anymore because I can't get enough oxygen. Um, mm -hmm. I think most people, at least from talking to them and, and you know, I'm not going to put anybody, put words in people's mouths or anything and name people, but, uh, you know, the handful of people that I did talk to, you know, right off the bat when they decided to withdraw, um, it was mostly like, you know, I just didn't expect this event to be what it was and I didn't train enough for it, um, which, you know, that's, you know, you train for an event that's not what you expect. And then all of a sudden you're there and it's not what you expect all of a sudden and you're, you're in a position that you haven't put yourself in the best spot for. So um, I don't think altitude played too much of a role. Um, it might have, you know, a couple reps short of your usuals maybe on some stuff, but um, I think more or less that wasn't really something that I would say was a uh, driving factor for, you know, the numbers that we lost during the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, so what do you think about as far as uh, the night nab went? How was that? I wasn't there. I was taking a nap while you guys did that. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was one of my favorite parts, maybe besides um, the Manitou incline. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the nighttime uh, land navigation, we were told to follow along this 5.3 mile loop um, and to get through it at a certain time. Um, and so that was really nice. Um, was it Mike and I, we stuck with each other because I was having comms issues. My phone was just not happy with us being up in the mountains and mm -hmm. so um we were mostly quiet we were mostly just like kind of stuck in our own heads which was nice because like all throughout the day you know like we've been going 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 and like um just like a lot of high energy and yeah, so me. yeah and so this was a time for us to kind of mentally like turn into ourselves and say like kind of process everything that has happened that's about to happen and kind of like collect ourselves and that could that could go one or two ways that could be for somebody being stuck in your head like that that could be a worst case scenario it's like all the demons are coming out they're telling you to quit you start listening to those demons and all hell breaks loose or on the other hand you could start to say okay what has gone right what has been going well um and what should i be doing to stay in the fight and so for me that was that was a moment of uh like peace in the chaos like i finally have time for myself it's and so shirt. yeah <laughs> there's a shirt on that or yeah shirt with that but um yeah so we did the one the the loop within the allotted time and then when we finished that loop we were told okay go do it back in reverse and you've got this amount of time and the sooner that you get back then the longer break that you get so we were like yeah let's just we can cruise through this. Like we'll get it fast and then we'll be have like a two and a half hour break and it'll be great. And <laughs> I think we ended up only getting like a 45, 50 minute break. <laughs> yeah, he, he texted me. He sent me a text at like 4 a.m., 3.30, 4 a.m. It was like, they're done here. We're going to just roll right into the incline. And I was like, 
cool, I'll just sleep in later then, it's all good. <laughs> Cause I was gonna meet with you guys out there and actually go up the incline and come down. I was like, four, I'm not doing 4.30 a.m. right now. I just fell asleep like two hours ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, you guys go have your fun. But then you came in, I mean, you, you did the incline in two hours, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, uh, you know what the average is for a normal person just to go up and not, I mean, maybe not average person, but for, mm -hmm. you know, the average time going up and down the incline is, you know what the average is? Like three hours, 14 minutes. Yeah, three hours and 14 minutes. You did it in two hours and 30 minutes with weight on your back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what the, that's like 45 <laughs> minutes faster. Like, that's not like, I mean, literally, that's not like a normal, like, you, you're, people are impressed when you're like, oh, I did it in three hours. That's 14 minutes faster than most. Okay, that's pretty impressive. But 45 minutes faster than, any, you know, other, the majority of people that have gone up and down that, that's, uh, I mean, <laughs> did you skip steps? I know they're wide steps. Did you skip steps? Did you oh, like man. jump, you know, um, 12 feet yeah. to the next step down and stuff? I'm did you fall and roll for part of it? Like, yeah. is there stuff we don't know that happened? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, like, um, no, my strategy with going up was do – 0 0.05 miles and then take a small break catch yourself and then go do another 0 0.05 miles and so it was just like that for uh it ended up being like i don't know why like on my watch it, it said an hour which i was a little upset about because i was reading it's 0.88 miles i was like okay and then it got to 0.88 and i'm like hey i'm still going up yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, G um, gps is funny like that yeah when you want it to be shorter it's always longer when it's want it to be longer it's always shorter and stuff mm -hmm. yeah so it was definitely a case of that and so um when i got to the top i remember I, I looked at my watch and it was like about an hour and a half and i was like okay i only have like three more miles to go like like i've i've done trail running i've done trail running with a ruck on like it's 20 pounds like this is fine we can we can do it let's yep. let's try to get 20 minute miles now and so, did you real quick did did you start your actual watch and stuff at the bottom of the incline or because I know you guys started a little ways away. So did you start it? Like, did it take two hours, 30 minutes to go from where you guys started like away from the incline or at the bottom of the incline directly? I started at the bottom of the incline. Okay. Okay. So once, once Craig said the clock starts now, okay. that's what I turned on my watch. All right. Got it. So, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I remember at the beginning he was saying like, you know, if you can if you can finish this the the standard is four hours for us. But if you can finish it in three hours thirty minutes, I'll be impressed. So when I got to the top in an hour and a half and I was like, I could do twenty minute miles down, I was like, All right, let's let's try to hit two thirty. Like let's make it an hour below what he wanted. So. Yeah, that's uh that's impressive. That was unexpected. I'll say that because um, <laughs> him and I were bouncing numbers back and forth a little bit. Like what, what, what's a good number. And um, you know, because obviously with weight it it's a game changer to have weight in a ruck while you're going up that incline. I mean, it's, it's like a wall in front of you. Um, so, you know, yeah, two thirty is impressive. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. So I think um, it also helps. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think Mike came in just under three or so, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. So, I mean, you guys both beat, you know, what we gave you as far as the time hack goes. Um, and, you know, this sort of, I don't know if you saw what I posted something, but, you know, the whole event, you never let off the gas pedal. Like, there was not a moment where you're like, I can slow down right now because I have a gap between me and so-and-so, so I can sort of keep some of that energy energy to have an advantage down the line it was there wasn't a moment where you know during an amrap where i had to say like hey you need to move faster because i can tell you're trying to take breaks you put out the whole entire time like it wasn't and i mean it was you know 100 percent effort the whole way through it so you know that was impressive to see because most people would say all right well i already get 
got my, you know, three rounds or five rounds of this AMRAP that I need to move on to the next section. I'm going to sort of slow myself down and maybe take an extra second or two here or there. My get ups, maybe I'll lay on the ground for a second before Brian says, Hey, get your ass off the ground, you know, stuff like that. And you were like down to the ground, back up, down on the ground, back up. And it was like, you were like, I'm going to get the most possible reps possible without even trying to take an extra breath or anything like that. So kudos to you for, you know, seriously, like the whole event, um, you were a machine, uh, you know, and, I don't, I don't, I can't say for anybody else, you know, that would get to 40 hours that would do that. But, you know, I, I don't expect that to be the norm, uh, for anybody in a 40 hour event period. Um, so yeah, that was, it was, it was something to watch, you know, and hopefully people got the chance to see it, you know, either Instagram or Facebook <laughs> lives and all that stuff, but, um, to see it in person, um, consistently nonstop, you know, it was, it was an impressive feat to see. So. Thank Sorry, you. got a little off topic there. Um, yeah, no, so yeah, and by the way, great picture at the top of the uh, incline. That, that was uh, <laughs> it was a beautiful picture. You you timed it out perfect. Um, mm -hmm. I think YK even said here uh, you timed it out to make sure you caught the sunrise. So you you hustled to get to the top in time to catch that sunrise, and that's why you you made that time act uh, so easily. We'll say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that sunrise was just absolutely remarkable it's like after so many hours of hard work and then being able to see that definitely i stood there for a moment and i was like yeah. damn you should this, you should this is cool. <laughs> take it in take it in i mean there I, I don't think i mean i could be wrong but i don't think there's going to be a time that you're going to be in that same exact position at the top of the incline and be like i just did that incline after doing oh uh, let's see what are we it's probably 16 hours into an event or so you know, being smoked like that and all, you know, that's, you know, no, that's in, it wasn't even 16. That was, that was, was the like, second, that was the second day. So that was actually, uh, like 20, 31 hours? 29 or 30 hours into it somewhere mm -hmm. around there. So yeah, I mean, take it in, enjoy it. Yeah. There's no reason <laughs> not to. Plus, I mean, you've been putting out the whole entire event up to that point, a hundred percent effort, take a moment for yourself, you know, to enjoy <laughs> something. So, um, yeah, that was, that was, that was awesome to see as far as that night nav goes with you guys doing that. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the incline, um, by the way, if you, I'm sure people have rucked through Colorado, there's a group out there and stuff, a club and all that, everything's uphill there. It's like, I don't, I don't think there's a downhill even when I start like going down, it's, it's, it's like, there's another uphill coming up. So, um, yeah, I mean, just. I would have to say you have some pretty damn strong legs, ultimately. Um, how was the uh, that five mile run you guys did? You enjoy oh, that? Yeah. I, I tried to. I, I picked that spot in the time because it was early enough where it wasn't going to be too hot. It was still a little warmer than I wanted it to be, but um, you know, Red Rock Canyon. I, we we did the trail, we jogged it and stuff, and it was like this pretty nice scenery actually, you know, with the rocks and stuff. So. Um, I was hoping you guys would actually enjoy the run. That was my goal because I'm the nice guy, remember, right? I'm the nice guy. Yeah, yeah you're the nice guy, too. <laughs> yeah, I know that run. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was hot. Yeah, we were yeah. all pretty, pretty heated up. And so um, there were, within the five-mile run, there were two peaks. And so we all, we all pretty much stuck together for, I would say, maybe like the first half. Yeah. Um, kind of walking up that that first to the, the top of the first peak. And then when we finally did that, we were running together for a little bit on the downhill. And then at some point we, we split off and there were two groups of us. And so it was Kyle and I running together for a long while. And so, um, I mean, it was right up to the very end we were together. I thought like, oh, this is going to be a case where like, we're going to start sprinting and like, yeah. it's going to be um neck that, and neck. that would have been a scary situation it's not the nicest terrain for sprinting as hard as you can you know especially yeah. that end part of the, the route the end part of the route is all downhill zigzaggies and rocks mm -hmm. and, you know gravel and all that so yeah so that's what i was expecting and then i mean i at one point i mean i see the cars and i no longer hear kyle i was like is like is he just giving this to me like that's that's not yeah, right, right. 
what's, what's going on? I, I didn't turn around because I was like, we're so close. Like, I just want to finish. I mean, like, it was like two minutes before he finally came in after yeah, me. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I stopped to puke. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a jerk. I didn't know it. <laughs> we, can put, we can put a tally up in the corner here. We'll just one puke here, one puke there, three pukes over here. Yeah, he, yeah. he I, I, I mean, first one. yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. He, he had some stomach thing going on. I don't know if he ate something weird or what, but um, his body was not happy with him at that point. I, I think that's really where he started to slow down some um, was when that started to happen because you could sort of see it in his face a little bit. Once he mm -hmm. sort of got his wind back a little bit, you, you could still sort of see he was a little like sluggish looking in the face. Uh, but yeah, I I remember him coming back and going, yeah, puked. I was like, no, well, drink some water, hydrate. You know, lo and behold, down the line, we're going to deal with a couple more opportunities for him to puke too. So um, mm -hmm. we can call him Pukey Kyle. So we got Cramping Curtis and Pukey Kyle. I'm sure Kyle's watching right now, probably not happy with that nickname. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, what what you guys do? You guys did some stuff before that um, with Buddy Carries, didn't you? And I, if I recall right, I remember seeing a video of you carrying somebody that's probably, oh, I don't know, a little more than you weigh, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So we were doing buddy carries. Um, and so what was it? Ian and I would pair up first. And then I would get paired up with Mike. And so Mike is 185 pounds. Yeah, just, and, just a little more weight than you are. Yeah, like when I weighed in at the beginning, I was 127, which. I think I weigh a little more than that, but okay, we'll go with what the scale says. It's it's around the ballpark. It's it's um, a, it's an accurate yeah. scale. I promise. It's an accurate scale. <laughs> I promise it is. <laughs> and so yeah, um, and I think that's where like a lot of the heavy drop training um, helped with uh, the heavy coupon, like the heavy yeah. mile, the heavy quarter mile, heavy half mile. Yeah. Um, you know, I would just like load up 70 pounds in my ruck and then take the 80 pound sandbag and just go for it. Yeah, um, so, I mean, you're actually pretty close then uh, to his weight. Not not too close, but you're close enough that it's not a uh, complete shock to the body, I would say. Yeah, like I, I knew what to expect going in. It's like when, when Greg would say, okay, you're going to go up to that hill. Like I knew it was going to suck. I knew it was going to be yeah. pretty miserable, but I, I knew it was doable. Yeah, uh, but, and buddy carries just plain suck. I mean, yeah. <laughs> either you're carrying somebody, which is, you know, can suck, um, or it sucks even worse being the person that's actually being carried, um, in my opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, having a shoulder jammed into your gut and your chest is just not very comfortable in life. Yeah, and so. I mean, as someone who tends to be on the smaller end of these events, uh, when the team gets to pick who who's the casualty, yeah, uh, I usually yep. don't have much say in that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's true. Most events, that's how it goes. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. What what do we have? Uh, so we got workouts. We did the team. Um, those. So the island workouts. How'd you like the island workouts? Which one was your favorite out of those? Which one was my favorite? <laughs> <laughs> like asking which shit sandwich tastes the best right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like oh man <laughs> i mean well i mean but you guys did get some downtime in the pool there was a hot did. tub a cold tub actually but you know yeah you my little downtime. spot <laughs> you guys were hanging out in the little spa spot <laughs> before the cop came or started investigating what was uh, going on over there. <laughs> he still went back after he left, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, this one was my favorite workout. So how how did it go again? It was. So for that one, you had core uh, was first. That one had uh, vertical swings, Russian twists, chest get-ups, starfish, tosses. Uh, lower body, we had uh, overhead lunges, ruck squats uh calf raises swings gtss upper body we did some shoulder to shoulder thrusters oh you're gonna tell me you love the upper body 
I already know. Oh, I shoulder, shoulder thrusters, avalanche, bird explodes, uh, explosions, curls, clean high tosses. Yeah, you're gonna mm -hmm. look it's upper body. I already know. Oh yeah, it was upper body. No, um, I mean, yeah, if I had to pick one that I enjoyed or <laughs> it enjoyed the most, um, yeah, it wasn't upper body. <laughs> It wasn't upper body. No. It was, I would say lower, but with upper, yeah. that was kind of where I had a uh-oh kind of moment. Yeah. Because um, uh, a while back, I had a shoulder injury, and I've been taking care of it on my own, just icing it, stretching it, avoiding movements that might otherwise agitate it. And so when I saw the avalanche movement, yeah. which anybody who might not be uh, aware of that is you're laying down and you have the sandbag behind your head, you have to kind of lock out your arms and bring it up to above your uh to your chest um it's a it's a shoulder intensive workout mm -hmm. and so i saw that and i was just like i don't know if i'm going to be able to physically do that this might this might be the first workout where i dnf and so when it got to that movement i was like all right well we're, we're gonna give it a go um there was no shoulder issue and so i was like okay yeah, yeah like we, we can go for this. I think we can finish it. Yeah, I could see there was some concern on your face uh, with the first set that you did of those. I could tell you're, you're slow moving for once, um, you know, not moving with a purpose and trying to complete something fast. You actually slowed yourself down at that point. So I guess there was a point where you technically weren't going 100% of the time. But, you know, <laughs> it's good reasoning, I would say. Um, but yeah, that was, I, I, I did remember you even saying like, I got a little concerned about my shoulder, but you were good. So um, I'm glad nothing happened with that. Cause that would have sucked, you know, type of mm -hmm. thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So it looks like uh, Mike actually just uh, commented here. He said he was 191 pounds on Friday. He weighed himself yesterday and he came in at 10 pounds lighter. So he's at 181. So oh, did you yeah. end up weighing yourself at the end? I, we said oh, we were yeah. going to, we never did it. No, I never did it. Got to do that, so. Oh man. So yeah, that's uh, ten pounds is a lot to lose, you know, over the course of an event. So, and and you guys were hydrating. There was, you know, I I think we did a pretty good job. Not to like pat my back or nothing, but we did a pretty good job making sure you guys had your bladders full and Nelgene's full. Um, I don't recall anybody saying, "Hey, I'm black on water. I don't have any," and then having to have you guys share or anything. So, mm -hmm. um, you know. Again, with the altitude too, we want to make sure you're hydrated um, to avoid any issues as far as that goes as well. So, um, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, see. What, what, no, go ahead. Oh yeah, I'm like you guys were providing us with a Gatorade, and I mean, yeah, that pickles. Was, pickles. You loved you, your pickles. Oh, I, I was so happy juice. about that pickles in the little jar. Oh man. How many total pickles did you eat? I think I ate three, maybe. That's it. I thought you. I thought. I thought there was a couple times I turn around and there's another pickle in your hand. <laughs> no, I think it was probably just the same one. No, I was like, I was definitely going for the juice. So it was like, yeah. this is, um, more more doable. Um, much better than the mustard. The oh mustard. man, that was, that was so nasty. It's like squirting. No, yeah. There's, I would say, out of an event, there's usually two people out of ten ish that are like, oh yeah, I love the mustard. It's great. And then the rest is you, like people gag and people like actually induced vomiting from mustard. Like they didn't try to vomit, but they just like take a shot of mustard, swallow it, and all of a sudden they run over into a corner and they're puking their guts out. And I'm like, well, that was completely the opposite thing that I wanted to happen with you taking mustard. So now you got to actually rehydrate more. I won't give you mustard, but you need to drink more water and electrolytes. But uh, yeah, yeah mustard is a staple of our events at this point, you know. I mean, we're going to get the mustard patches made and, or I'm getting them made, um, and U-Haul patches for the Cerberus events. So we'll have some U-Haul yeah. patches, um, that we're going to get made too, since that's, uh, two things you can pretty much assume will be in those events. There's always going to be a U-Haul. There's always going to be mustard and now we'll probably bring some pickles too. So maybe we'll make a pickle patch. Ooh, that sounds, yeah. that rolls off the tongue real nice, actually a pickle patch. There we go. Uh, See, it's already better. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, YK wants to know how the food was at the event. Yeah, so at the very beginning, they took our food away. And then kind of like as the event went on, we were given more and more food privileges. So like the first time that we were given food, it was like, 
here you go. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, well, that sucks. Um, and then as the, yeah, <laughs> as the event went on, it was like, okay, here's a, here's a pile of food, pick whatever you want. And then here's a bag of food, grab whatever it is that you need. And then finally, when we hit the, the 24 hour mark, all of the food became available for us. And it was like, grab as much as you want and take whatever. And so, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think the thing with our events, like, we're not out for people to quit. We don't want people to quit. We don't want people to fail. And we want to give you every opportunity to be at a position where you can prove that you deserve to be there. Right. So, um, you know, the, the food thing's a mental thing. It's a crutch. You could get through a 24 hour event and not have to eat something. Um, you know, your stomach might hurt. You might, you know, drink more water, whatever, but you can do it. Um, I've done events where I actually forgot that I had even food in my bag and I just was going, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's doable, uh, you know, and, and we get to that point though, where it's like, all right, now it's pass fail. Like we want to have you guys be as good as you can be 24 hours into an event. Yeah. Um, that's why we were just like, here, what do you need to basically get yourself through this event? Um, because the food's not going to make a difference. Like in, in the end, it's not, you're not going to pass or fail most likely on food. Um, it's going to be your physical capabilities, but having that food can help you a little bit here, a little bit there, most likely not to a point though, where you're going to pass or fail something, but it can help. Um, and that's sort of the reason it's like, here, you know, here's your food. What do you need? Take it. And you know, now you have to go past this though. At the same time, we're also saying don't eat too much because you have to go past something too. And yeah. you know, you know, if it's a, a shovel run or something, you don't want to have a full stomach when you start doing a shovel run because you're going to have a half a stomach full, you know, by the halfway point of that shovel run, um, you know, puking your guts out probably while you're sprinting your ass off. Um, but yeah, I mean, the food uh, we had, I, if Greg, if you're still watching, I think he was watching. Um, what was the size of that bag you had, that dry bag? See if he responds to me here. Right. It was a big dry bag though, and it was packed. Like, yeah, it was like you could only roll it down like twice to like I, clip it together. Um, yeah. I mean, I know I brought a ton of food. I brought like a whole MRE big old thing. Yeah. I brought like uh, trail mix, gummy worms, which I found at the front of the U-Haul. It looked like somebody was getting in on that. On um, what? My gummy worms. <laughs> I did see gummy worms on the front of the U-Haul. I didn't know those were yours. I didn't eat them. I didn't yeah. touch them. I guess I just threw <laughs> Greg under the U-Haul bus like, on that one. <laughs> I was looking for my gummy worms. I was like, I can't find them anywhere. It must be in the other bag or maybe someone grabbed it. And then when I went to go get the bananas from the U-Haul, I found them. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I didn't take them. I promise. Where's Greg? Let's see. Uh. I gotta see. There's gotta be a Greg coming on here somewhere about gummy worms because it wasn't me. <laughs> gummy worms. I didn't eat anything from the bag actually. I don't think I did. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there was like gummy worms. What else did I bring? Like two packets of um, dried salmon to try. Did and you have like jelly meat. beans? Um, I had like those like electrolyte jelly beans, but not. Troy might have ate those. He said he ate somebody's jelly beans. Yeah, those aren't trying to know. Right, Greg, Greg says guilty of the gummy worms. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Greg, Greg ate the gummy worms. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's great. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. All right, so let's see here. After the workouts, we ended up basically going to uh, Bear Creek. So that was the uh, – the rope stuff. So we did the rope tests, you know, the sandbag rope drags and all that stuff. Um, I think most people saw that, that, I mean, there's not much to talk about there as far as the polls, other than, uh, jog my memory. What place did you come in on those rope poles? Every time just I like, came just like once or twice or times. three. Yeah, that's right. It was three times. Yeah. Not to, not to bring that up, but yeah uh, that was what what happened with your rope there there was a couple moments where uh i think you wanted to turn it into a knot tying class or something i don't know what was happening yeah, there. yeah i wanted to practice uh my yeah knots yeah um 
uh, I was just getting sloppy with the rope. And so it would knot itself up. And then when I like pulled it to be taut, you were like, no, it's, it's knotted up. You got to fix that. And so, um, yeah, I had to go back and fix that. And then, uh, that was the first time around. And so I tried to be more mindful mo moving forward, but it still didn't really affect me. I was still getting forth that the sandbag drags are just definitely not on my, uh, list of strengths. They're not and one of my, what? I'm not going to lie. There was a moment while watching, I was like, I finally found something that she's not like competing in the top two of. And I was like, yeah. I found something. So I, had, I, I got a little happy on that. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you still smiled through the whole thing, even though you were in fourth place. I think you still had sm a smile on your face. Um, I, I will tell everybody here, I actually had a um, goal, I guess you could say, with Liz that I had to get her to not smile for like 20 minutes straight. Um, and I think it took all the way to like 30 seven hours when she was doing the Q mod movements. Um, and I just had the camera on her. I didn't talk to her, which is probably why she didn't turn to smile or anything. She was so focused, but she did not smile for a chunk of that. It was definitely at least 20 minutes. So I am chalking that up as a goal checked off. That right. I was able to do. Um, I'll give that one to you. <laughs> I still have to get, I still have to get Ian lie to, uh, to puke though. Cause it's been 20 years since he's puked. He said, so that all, when he tell me something like that, it's like, okay, we can make this work. We can figure this out. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm uh, hopefully Manchester uh, throwdown actually next month. We'll see if uh, we can make something happen there. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Let me see if there's any other uh, questions coming up here real quick. Uh, when are you going to decide on Charleston? Oh, Charleston. Charleston. Yeah, dude. In March. That sounds like such a great event and my aunt lives out there and it would be so cool. Um, if my current life trajectory, trajectory doesn't go the way that I want to go, then I'll definitely be there. Um, right. And I mean, yeah, I just kind of want to keep it on the lowdown. Like I'm still working it out, making sure that um, everything goes through before I make the announcement to yeah. all no, of I it. totally get it. I know what's up. We did. good. I understand. Yeah. But if it doesn't work out, Carlson, it is. Hey, listen, I would love to have you at the event, but at the same time, I'd love to have you get to a point where you want to be as far as your goals go too. So, yeah. um, again, hopefully we'll see you there, but at the same time, hopefully we won't see you there. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Yeah, well. yeah exactly. Um, let's see here. Uh, everybody loves your smile. I mean, now I'm just getting all these like, hey, love the smiles. She smiles so much. Love the smile. When's the sister event? I saw something about that, actually. <laughs> yeah, yes. I'm pretty sure it's your sister asking. Is your sister's name uh, Sabrina? Yeah, that's her. <laughs> yeah, she, she's asking when the sister event is. Yeah, we, we need to figure that out. It sounds like a bunch of family is coming to New York in October. So maybe... Maybe we'll need to do something then. <laughs> All right. We and and guess I also have a forty hours. Yeah, we can make it forty hours. I'll be forty fine. hour of sister event. Do yeah, you have to have a sister? Is that the only way it works? You can I only mean, sign up if you got a sister. Hmm. What do you think, Jordan? Only have a sister. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll stay with sisters. Oh, you got to have at least one sister on your team. Right, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, let's see, Wendy, that's, is that another sister? Oh, that's my mom. Oh, it's your mom. She has, uh, so how many women do this event or how often? So, um, as far as the Cerberus events go, we've only done three of these. This is the third one. Um, the first one we had two women finish, I believe it was with France and Jennifer Amick. Um, and then or and i think we had three start that one three ones start that one uh the last one before this was sarasota uh we had one female um and she did not finish the eight mile movement on the pass fail um nothing against those other two events and you can ask uh don and ian uh those two guys have done all three events um, they finished the first two and they made it to about eight 
hours and 10 hours into this one and they both unanimously decided this was much, much harder than uh, those prior two events. So um, this is probably, you know, the level that can be expected um, for this event going forward. Um, I don't think we're going to do something like we did with Cle <laughs> Cleveland and then we ramped it up for Sarasota and then we ramped it up again for uh, Colorado Springs. I would expect anybody signing up, you are going to get the Colorado Springs of Charleston. You're going to get the Colorado Springs of, I don't know where, but someplace else, um, you know, sometime in August, July, somewhere in that range. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, I think we've slowly pieced together the perfect uh, scenario that we want to have um, for these events. So um, if you, if you, did Cleveland and you want to come out and do Charleston, don't expect a Cleveland based event because it's going to be harder. I can promise you that. Um, but yeah. So how'd you like the, uh, the, the slug trails? That's where I tied you guys up with the ropes and like the, the clips were all able to slide and stuff. So the ropes would extend one side and you'd lose it on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was a, I mean, that sucked. But it was a good, like from as a, as a bystander, that would have been a very cool team based uh, movement. I mean, you had to have all three of us communicating yep. um, together. And if someone started to deviate, then everyone else was going to suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so from, yeah, from the outside, it was really cool. But man, doing it. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Kurt, I'll give the. I'll say this though. Curtis. Curtis took charge. He. Uh, yeah. He did a hell of a job coordinating that uh, movement. Uh, yeah. That's, that's why on the way back I said, Curtis, you got to shut up. You're not talking anymore. Sorry, bud. Yeah. But Curtis really stepped up. The other up. two of you have to do have to do it from here on. So figure it out. Um, yeah, it was fun to watch just because you know I could see you guys couldn't really see each other because you guys had your heads down for bear crawls and you're walking and I'd see one of you start to veer off a little this way. And the other person starts to veer off this way. And all of a sudden the ropes are getting shorter and the sandbags are getting closer to everybody. And then all of a sudden you guys both come up on the ends and look over and Mike's like halfway back this way and, or he's too far forward. It was, it was cool to watch just to see the dynamic of the actual uh, mm -hmm. rope changing between all four sandbags. Cause at that point we, we stole Kyle Crutcher's sandbag um, because I was like, well, we can make this even more fun. Um, since Kyle can't use, isn't using a sandbag, we're going to use it. Um, and I, I mean, I actually, I thought it was pretty cool to watch to be honest. That was, that was sort of a fun little uh, uh, team building type exercise that um, we'll probably see again going forward. Uh, maybe not Charleston, you know, we'll, we'll maybe come up with something different for that, but um, it'll definitely pop up somewhere, someplace uh, mm -hmm. for future events. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. Oh, let's see here. Um, we did the incline. All right. Out of all the AMRAPs, which ones were your favorite? Which was your favorite AMRAP? I mean, like, I'm, I'm going to say that last sand dune was my favorite one. I think you um, PR'd. I think I did. I think you PR'd. Um, I mean, yeah, because like when I'm at home and I'm doing it, I'm either doing it with the 60 pound sandbag. So, of course, yeah. I'm going to get less uh, rounds in. Or if I do it with the 40, it might be because, oh, I'm having a slum day and I'm just kind of taking it easy, take a little minute break here and there. Whereas yeah. when it was, and then you can even argue with the um, snorkel, I was trying to pace myself because of the, bre uh, the breathing. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. want my breathing to be so rapid that I really couldn't catch my breath breathing through this tube. Yeah, but I mean, you still had seven head. rounds on that one. Mm -hmm. So you had seven, I think seven, 12, because yeah. I'm pretty sure Curtis was like, God dang, I had seven, 11. He heard, yeah. he heard yours out of your mouth and he went, man, she beat me by a rep. So, <laughs> uh, and, and I mean, while we're on the topic of snorkels, um, who, who was it that told Troy to get, a face mask snorkel that had a little like thing that reminded me of I, I forget the cartoon. There's a cartoon or something with the snorkel guys that have the snorkel on the top. It just reminded yeah. me of that. Oh, I didn't return it. It's in that box on the floor. Um, yeah. Oh, that's Jordan. He's getting it. 
Oh no no! Uh, I was saying, who was the person that actually? You know, oh, who was that? I don't know. They they such a blue falcon. They such a jerk. Um, yeah. So when I was, I saw the um, the packing list and I saw we needed a snorkel, and I was like, man, I remember Greg said that we might go swimming. So like swimming is something that I'm just really bad at, and like I can't even go on underwater without like plugging my nose. So like I need to get something to, like help me with my face and so I saw this guy still in his package and everything I was gonna return it and I was like yeah let's get this I like I mean, you don't have to take it out of the packaging you don't have to because you're gonna return it because we have pictures <laughs> here we go I was like um yeah let's get this because like then like I won't have to worry about my nose at all it'll just be nice and secure and so he got it and put it on I was like this is something bad's going to happen if I move forward with it. <laughs> but so I did. That, you, go ahead. No, you're going to say yeah. it right now. Yeah. So I still wanted to make like the money I paid for it worth it. So I like took a picture on, posted it on Instagram. And like, yeah, I got my snorkel for Cerberus. <laughs> didn't think much of it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Troy. I, I didn't mean for <laughs> <laughs> I, I was on the floor laughing when I saw him pull that thing out. I, I, it was like I was dumbfounded and shocked all at once. And I, like, that was that moment where like something you just get hit by something and you don't know what just happened. And I was just like, what the heck is going on right now? Um, <laughs> and then every time he talked, I don't know if you could hear it, but when he talked, he sounded like Charlie Brown, like the <laughs> Charlie Brown movie, you know, shows where like, wah, 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 wah. and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying, but if you can't breathe, just take the mask off. Like, don't feel like you have to keep it on if you're not able to breathe. Um, yeah, so that was, uh, yeah. so Troy just blew up the whole comment section here. He says, thanks, Liz. I'm going to find that photo you sent. And then he says, I couldn't freaking breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, <laughs> like when he pulled that out, I was like, what is this like Darth Vader mask he's putting on here? Like he's like gonna run into a fire or something. It was like a full face mask. Like uh I was that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> that uh that was a that was a good laugh at that point. But it was funny too because you know, we said snorkel. We specified snorkel. We never said anything about a mask. And uh all of a sudden there's like three, four people pulling out masks, and I'm like they're like, Do we need to wear the mask too? And I'm like you brought a mask then heck yeah you're gonna wear it and <laughs> like you didn't need to bring it but you got it so you're gonna wear it and uh i was pretty funny just watching everybody with masks fogged up they couldn't see anything and do that oh. whole am wrap that way so um it, it it made my night more fun to be honest uh to watch so <laughs> but yeah yeah that was uh that was a heck of a time but then, yeah, so the last sand doom, though, you ended up with nine full rounds and six reps. Yeah. And so, so like, with that case, yeah, it was, like, the, the camera's right in my face. I have everyone behind me, like, counting yeah. reps. And oh, yeah, it was too quiet when they weren't. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was way too awesome. quiet for a finishing-type scenario. I was like, we got to get some noise in here or something. <laughs> and so it was, like, get to the five, so we're definitely in the – uh, okay and good to go yeah and then beyond that it was like well, I can't slow down now like uh and I mean like that's just me too like some people like they know how to play the game and like slow down and like you know you you've got things to do still and so like uh pretend that you're fatigued even though you could probably go a little faster than you are and I don't know like to me like that just doesn't exist um I feel like in the back of your head the song gas pedals just playing like gas pedal, <laughs> gas pedal, and you're just like faster, <laughs> faster, go, go, like that. Yeah, like, that. like I said, that I, in my head, and you know, there's the event me, and then there's like the hey, I'm your friend in the background over here, you know, mm -hmm. hoping everything goes as pat, you know, perfect as possible. The event me was saying, good job, you're going at a pace that you can handle, and that's your pace, and you're not slowing down. But then the me inside me is saying go slower, save some energy. You have to climb a rope. Like, I know. like, don't smoke yourself completely yet, please. And, you know, that was that moment where I was like sitting there going like, she's crushing it. And <laughs> the gas pedal is still to the floor. Um, and at the same time, the other side of me and, you know, the back of my head saying, 
please don't smoke yourself too hard. Like you can slow down. You know, I don't know if you slowed down, I may have gave you maybe a second to decide and then been like three, two, one, go. But uh, yeah, there's, there's that person side, like the actual person outside the event. And then there's the event side where I'm like, no, she's doing good. She's smoking herself like mm -hmm. she should. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was, like I said, I think you, I, I definitely think you PR on that one. Cause there was very little space for you to gain more reps because you were pretty much go. And it wasn't, there wasn't like, Hey, I stepped back for a couple seconds and just waited. And you know, you could have got a couple reps in there, but it was, you were just go. Um, so that was impressive. Like I said, it was impressive to watch you through the whole 40. Um, but there was definitely part points where it was like, damn, she's just crushing it right now. Um, so yeah, it was, it was awesome to watch for sure. Um, what do you think of the Q Mod Six? What was, what went through your head when I told you guys you were gonna do a Q Mod Six? Oh man, I was like, oh, I was not looking forward to that. <laughs> I was remembering all of the Q Mods that I'd done in yep. HCT, and it's like, now put six together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like there was one in particular that I was thinking about, and like. Uh, it was the sandbag drags while doing a bear crawl. Yeah. And I remember when I was doing a round, it was like Thanksgiving. And I like told my family, it's like, oh yeah, like I need to find a field to go do this. And so my family was just like, like it was, I think Gordon and my dad, they were just walking around this field, like looking at me like, I think she's doing this. <laughs> so I thought about that moment in particular. And I was just like, Am I gonna have to do this? Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna make it worse. You're gonna have to go in reverse now. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you only had to do 17 minutes of that, so that only was only 17 minutes. Time. Sorry. Yeah. Plug this in. There we go. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, I so your time wise, I mean, you did the, that whole Q mod basically. Um, you know, you you did the first movement, which was basically a ruck run, which mm -hmm. you know not hard. Like I said, I marked you guys as patches because I assumed you could do that in two hours. Um, you know, you did that in two minutes and 12 seconds. So, I mean, if you really look at that, that's, you know, just over an eight minute mile, about a nine minute mile, uh, you know, with the weight. So that, that's a solid time for that. You came in, uh, roughly about five minutes after that, you finished the, uh, ruck overhead. So you did the ruck overhead in just over five minutes. Cause you came in at seven fifty one on that one. Um, 24 minutes and 10 seconds with lateral tosses. So you finish that in, you know, 15-ish uh, minutes, roughly. Um, and then you did the, uh, what was the next one? You had ruck lunges. So you did those in about 20 minutes. And then you did inchworms with your ruck on. That mm -hmm. one took you a little bit longer. Yeah, that one, that one was on the supper fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, at the beginning of the, when we said we were going to do the QMOD, it's it's a ramp up, right? Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, the reason is when we do a QMOD 6, we want people to come out and try it. So, you know, we're not going to make them do backwards bear crawl sandbag drags, you know, right off the bat because some people just aren't capable of doing it and they don't want to do it. So, you know, we ramped it up. So, um, you know, that was the fifth movement. That was the movement you had to finish to go to the next, you know, uh, think because it was pass fail. Um, was there a moment where so, so you came at 46 minutes, so you had basically uh, just under an hour and 15 minutes to finish that? Do you do you recall when you did that last? Did you do that in a, a Q mod in any of the rounds that you did? Not that, no, and okay. so, so you didn't have anything to base it off, you had no clue how long that was going to take, no. <laughs> And at first I was like, oh, like do inchworms like without our ruck. And then you said with ruck. And I was like, oh no, man. <laughs> I used to love inchworms and now I'm just like, mm, I don't know. Well, about this. <laughs> you, you did a lot. You did a lot of inchworms. Um, you didn't have to do a push up though. We took, I took the push up out of that one um, because that would have been just mean. And I don't think, I don't know if anybody would have finished with a push up on the fifth one at hour 37 ish in the vet. Yeah. So, um, that. but yeah, I mean that I, I was nervous cause you know, obviously I, I, again, we don't want you to fail. Um, 
but it took 11 minutes for you to make that first leg. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, 11 there, 22. Then there's another leg over here. And this one's a long leg over here. And I was like, oh, it's going to be close. It's like, it's, yeah. this could be close. Just based on that first 11 minutes, though. Uh, and then, you know, you, I, and I'll be honest with you. The first two movements or the three movements, I told you roughly a minute or two later. Like, I was like, you came in at 2.12, and I think I told you 3.12 thir- 3 or something. Because mm-hmm. I was trying to get you to think, oh, crap, I'm, I'm not going as fast as I need to go. I should probably ramp it up a little bit. Um, yeah. But it, then once you got to a point where I was like, no, you're good. Like, I, I told you I did that to you. But um, to try to, you know, motivate you a little bit more to keep moving faster. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, you came in with 17 minutes to spare to, you know, as far as the pass fail goes. Um, and then, of course, you goes, well, I got 17 minutes. I'm going to go finish the quarter mile of uh, sandbag backwards bear crawls now because I want to be the first person to finish all six in two hours. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think it's possible and I'm just being honest, but you know, you have to continue yeah. anyways, but you know, yeah, whatever. I, whatever. Yeah. I knew it wasn't going to happen, but it's like, yeah, let's give a false motivation. Let's just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 like I said, you did 17 minutes. You got down that uh, first uh, loop or that first leg of it, basically, yeah. um, you know, that first part. So uh that's pretty good. If you consider it took you 11 minutes to do inchworms, which inchworms are pretty much just a steady up, down, up, down, up, down, you know, movement. And uh, sandbag backwards bear crawl is just like a freaking suck fest. I mean, it sucks, period. Um, so only six minutes longer to do that is pretty actually impressive if you break it down. Um, let's see here. So from here, let's see what else we got. Were you worried about the uh, shuttle run? No, I, so. You I slipped felt, on that first move. First, yeah, the first, the first turnaround, I did slip a little bit and I was like, all right, like, let's not do that again. Um, I mean, back at my CrossFit gym, like we'll do like shuttle runs, yeah. uh, not quite like that, but like we do shuttle runs. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, like it was a movement. It was like, all right, like get low, like you need to like, this is how you're going to be able to like pivot when you need to turn mm-hmm. around in an efficient way. And so um, I felt pretty good about that. When you told me my time and it was 27 seconds out of the 31 that was necessary, I was like, oh, damn, it actually was kind of close. <laughs> well, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, four seconds is actually a lot of time on a 30 yard dash, 30 mm-hmm. yard shuttle run. Um, you know, the difference between. I would say like Sarasota when we did it was like 34 seconds and like the fastest was like 27 seconds. So like yeah. only like a three to four second difference between yeah. the pass fail aspect. So it's actually, you actually came in pretty good. I mean, if you really think about it, when you're sprinting as fast as you can at that point, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, that's, that's a decent chunk of time considering how much distance you cover on a full sprint. Yeah, um, that's true. So you, 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 you beat it pretty solidly, I would say. Um, and the being at our 39 or so, you know, that was pretty solid to come in at 27 seconds on the shuttle run while slipping on the first move. Um, <laughs> also. So that's, you know, again, that was, uh, another feat that I was impressed with to say the least. So, um, all right. So I guess the elephant in the room, since yeah. this is the elephant in the room, right? Uh, the rope climb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man. So leading up to this event, I mean, I had months of knowing that this was going to happen. Like we were going to do two rope climbs, 30 feet total, uh, split up into 25. Uh, not 25, sorry, 15. 15. Yep. Um, and there would be roughly 30 pounds in my rug. And so over at my gym, uh, I would do a CrossFit workout. And then immediately after that, pull out the rope and do a few ascents up with my 30 pound rug. And so uh, when I came into this, in my head, I was thinking, oh, you got this. Like, this is the one guarantee, like, you got this. 
And so if you can just get to that point, it's, it's in the bag. And so I went up the first rope climb, got it. And I was like, okay, like we're going good. We're, we're tight. We're feeling pretty sore, but, um, let's, let's get the second one going. And I mean, like three feet from the top was yeah. when I lost my footing mm -hmm. and I was just holding on like bare hand, like with nothing but my hands and like, couldn't get my feet back together. Like, and I mean, like my head just like went in a thousand directions and like, yeah. no, you, you went into fight or flight mode. You were, you, yeah. the adrenaline dump happened. Um, mm -hmm. we could see it. Your hands were yeah. shaking. Your legs were shaking. Like it was, you had your life flash before your eyes that you were going to fall and hit the ground. Um, yeah. and your body physiologically was in a bad state because your adrenaline just dumped into your body. Um, mm -hmm. if anybody's ever been in sort of like a scary situation where like something almost happens or adrenaline dump happens, you lose a lot of dexterity in your fingers. You lose a lot of that forearm strength and stuff because your body's just sort of like freaking out. Um, and even talking to Greg, like we sort of at that point when we noticed the, the, the shaking of the legs, the hands that were sort of shaking and stuff like you were, you were scared. Um, we, we both, and this is not during that time, but we both talked about, we both knew at that point, it was going to be almost a guarantee. You weren't going to be able to get up that rope, but both Greg and I were like, we're going to believe in miracles right now. Like <laughs> literally we both said the same thing. We were like, we're going to believe that there's a miracle that's going to happen right now. And that's why we kept saying, go, you can do it. We're going to get you. You're going up. Like, it was like, we, we felt like we were in that storybook movie. Like we didn't know we were, but somewhere, somehow there was like a hand in a come down and be like, Ooh, like move her up a little bit. Um, and, and we kept hoping, like, it was like, you know, we were, we were literally living a storybook movie that was supposed to have the happy ending. Um, yeah. And we, like I said, there wasn't a person in the world outside of Greg, like Greg and I were, we wanted you up that rope more than anybody in the whole world, other than maybe yourself. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, that was, um, that was the, <laughs> the moment, sorry, uh, <laughs> when you had your, that adrenaline dump uh, that we saw, like, this is, this is going to be a rough uh, shot at this at that point so yeah uh, but yeah go ahead <laughs> like what was your thought process because i know you even said like you know you didn't even hear us at the bottom below you saying hey we're right below you we're gonna catch you if anything happens you're safe like we oh, had man. i like her. dudes hanging out below you like this ready to you know sweep you off your feet basically oh man i heard that i was like you're gonna catch like what is it 130 like 160 pounds of dead weight just coming down like oh yeah we're gonna catch you <laughs> at the very least you're gonna we're gonna catch you and we're gonna be on the bottom and we'll soften the fall but you're gonna be all right <laughs> at the very least yeah it was like Trust yeah, me, it, there was no doubt in my mind that the worst case scenario was myself or some well I, hopefully myself i would do I, I wouldn't want any of the participants to get hurt but at the very least, I was going to be underneath you and say, well, I guess I'm going to get my back cracked and readjust it at this point. And you're going to land nice and soft on the ground and, you know, be able to get back up and call it a day. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, there, I mean, we were, we were legit like four people around, like, you know, ready yeah. just in case. Um, Cause I mean, like I said, we all wanted you up that rope like that. That was yeah. the, uh, I, I don't think I've seen in any of my events, um, or even any prior events I've done, the type of camaraderie from the people that weren't even in the event. I mean, they, they made it to a certain point in the event, but they all came back just to support you and see you succeed. And like, it was, uh, there was not a dry tear. I mean, if you watch the video, um, you know, not to point out anybody, but there's people in the background. You can see them going like this and wiping like, you know, little tears out of their eyes. I was crying. I'm not afraid to say I was crying like, you know, at the end of it. Um, because we were all sitting there, you know, wanting to see this, you know, happen. Um, because, yeah. you know, like, like I said, you know, <laughs> it's like you, you 100% deserve to have that finish. Um, you know, the amount of effort and, you know, 
stuff you put into it, um, you deserve it. Uh, it's just, there's a standard. And, you know, as much as we'd love to be like, yes, we can give it to you. But um, <clears throat> that's the thing with our events is there's the standard, um, yeah. which you are now nicknamed pretty much the standard because, you know, <laughs> anybody asks, like, what do I need to do to finish a Cerberus event? I'm like, just be Liz. That's that's the new line, I think, that, you know, uh, we're putting out there. <laughs> so, um, you know, <laughs> be Liz. That's pretty much it. Because, um, again, I, I think if you don't slip, and that adrenaline dump doesn't happen, um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that you get up that rope that second time. Um, you know, because again, that adrenaline, uh, I think the adrenaline just worked against you in that point and, uh, you know, didn't pan out for you uh, because of that, so. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, such a shocker. Like, I mean, I, I, I was even talking to Mike about it when we were in the mountains and like, yeah, like, I, th I think I got the yoke. I think I got it. And so when that happened, and I was just like, I, I was dumbfounded. I was like, this is actually what's going to take me out. It's going to be the 11th hour. And like, this is where, like, I'm not going to be able to move forward. But I mean, the, the standard is the standard. I would, like, I would expect for it to be upheld. Um, I'm perfectly fine saying, like, I'm not a finisher. Uh, this is a black class. Um, but I'm also comfortable with saying like, I put in a hundred percent and like, I'm always yeah, let's talk about that. like, uh, for like why I do these events, it's always to like, try to find that limit. Like, where is that limit? And, um, how can I make myself better? And like, in having that mindset, you can't be shocked when lo and behold, you find your limit. And my yep. limit is three feet. So, um, 27, give yourself credit, 27 feet. <laughs> 27 feet you just couldn't get to 28 29 30 but yeah and so um i mean that just tells me like okay like you need to work on your rope climbs more you need to be able to have sure footing because yeah it's fine and dandy when you're doing a spartan race and it's like mile five and you do your rope climb and everything's all good but can you do that same thing 39 hours after doing so much work and then with 30 pounds on your back. Yeah, exactly. Nobody cares what you can do fresh. So, um, yeah, that's, there's, there's always room for growth. Um, the events like these, like you see where your strength is, but you see where your weaknesses are and you can either take that at face value. You can say like, Oh, well, that's just who I am. I'm never going to be good at that. Or you can say, no, I'm going to, I'm going to make myself an expert in that. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, you know, again, it's, it's, we put the standard together months and months ago, um, you know, so like you said, and, and I think you've taken it the absolute best way you could possibly take it as far as that goes, uh, because again, you, you knew what it was, you came into it, uh, you trained for it, um, and you, there's no way to know how your body's going to react at hour 40. You know, yeah. you don't train for a marathon by running a marathon, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you got to hour 40 and you've done it before. And again, I think to be honest, if you don't have that slip that happens and that moment of, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall, you know, off a rope, I think you still get up to the top. Um, and that's just, you know, luck of the draw. You can't, there's nothing you can do about it. And it, it's, uh, you know, it is what it is, right? It, you just can't change that. Um, and had, had you had, had your body flushed that adrenaline out and you had a moment to come down, maybe you could have done it. But again, the standard is with the 10 minute mark, right? So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we can't change the standard as we've stated many a times. Um, but you know, I, I think you've inspired people. I, I think you have, you know, pass, fail, whatever. I think you inspired people and maybe even more inspired people because of the way you've handled it uh, even. Um, to be honest, like, I think there's more in, inspiration coming from this. You know, I can't tell you how many people have commented or posted and said, hey, my daughter watched this and I didn't even have to say anything. And she was like, just in awe of your ability to do something or 
my daughter got down and started doing squats, you know, for a few minutes and went, Ooh, that was hard. And like, you know, here you are doing 40, 40 hours of something. Um, so, you know, you've inspired people. Um, you've set a mark. I mean, you, you I, I got a feeling we're going to see more people come out to sit, you know, Charleston because they're like, man, I'm just inspired by what she just did. I want to be a part of that. Uh, you know, so I, th I think you, uh, you know, nobody should take anything away from you for the last, you know, 10 minutes of that event. Um, you know, like I told you at the event, if I could take a few threads out of the patch, that would be the <laughs> of like, here, you finish the event. But um, again, I can't do it. It's the whole standard. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's how minute that rope climb should be seen as for what you actually did. Not to say Greg's rope climb is not meaningful, but, um, cause I'm sure he's still watching, but, uh, you know, like everything up to that point, you were just an absolute beast and you, um, I mean, you inspire people. You do. It's, it's just a fact. Um, and I think we've seen that just from the comments alone. And I'm sure there's people that have seen it that have no clue what the heck they just watched and they were inspired. You know, it's, it's somebody swiping through, you know, Instagram reels or something and sees like, wow, look at that. That girl just did this or that, you know, and we'll never know who they are or any of that, but, um, you know, you, you, you put it all out there. And, uh, again, like you said, it wasn't the finish you wanted. Um, but it, it was a hell of a finish to an event, yeah. right? Uh, oh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, kudos to you. I mean, when you look around a gym and you are in the middle of the gym and all the other guys that did the event up to that point are cheering you on because they couldn't get that far, um, you know, whether it be their bodies just in the green and stuff, I mean, because, you know, some days it's just not your day. But you were the only one there at hour 40 standing there to take on even the final challenge. Um, and that says a lot. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I appreciate you coming out and taking it on because you made it worth our while to be there. Um, and, and truly, you know, you've, you've impressed people. You've inspired people from doing that. So, well, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no. That, like I said, thank you for, you know, taking the challenge on. Well, that, and I, yeah, like, thank you so much for, for running this event. I mean, um, like, having this idea and then executing it, like, giving people another... Uh,